Welcome, everybody. This is Avoiding the Addiction Affliction, brought to you by Westwards Consulting and the Kenosha County Substance Abuse Coalition. I'm Mike McGowan. You know, if you're a parent, one of your ever-present concerns is whether you can navigate your children into adulthood without the damage substance use can cause. And when the drug takes the life of your child, what do you do? Well, our guest today, Carmen Skarlupka, responded to the loss of her daughter by founding Never Use Alone, a national overdose response hotline. Never Use Alone reduces the risk of an accidental overdose by people who use drugs while alone. Welcome, Carmen. Thank you, Mike. I'm so glad you could be here. Carmen, it's always interesting, and I know it's always difficult, but can you tell us a little bit about your daughter, Samantha, Sam? Of course. I'd love talking about Sam. Samantha was 26 years old, and she experienced a fentanyl overdose that was fatal. She texted me and asked me to come pick her up. And when I arrived, or I shouldn't say when I arrived, I then got a responding phone call from shock trauma telling me that she had passed. If you have a family member that uses substances or has a substance use disorder, or even just a child experimenting, a, a grandmother whose pain medication has been cut off the thing that you dread, Mm -hmm. that life-changing moment is called the call mm. you don't want to get the call right because all of your hopes and dreams and aspirations for your child or your loved one your partner your parent go away mm. and I got that call in 2018 April 14th and it forever alters your life you know having a child the moment you you know that you're going to have a child and then you see that child you understand a depth of love unconditional love that may not have ex been in your life prior to that you will do anything to support their life their well-being their happiness and so sam was this ex wonderful, brilliant, funny, charismatic. She was an artist. She taught herself to read and write Japanese so that she could go from Pokemon and wait for the English dubbed version to come out so that she could <laughs> get keep up on episodes, right? That whole anime generation, which is still with us, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, today I'm a grandmother, right? And it's like, oh my gosh, it's still here. But Sam was extraordinary. So briefly, she was struck by a car as a pedestrian, complex, life-threatening trauma. She had to have her arm reattached to give you an idea of the wow. extent of her injuries. So I became her personal caretaker. She was fully disabled and we, her pain medication prescriber from shock trauma was charged by the state this was in maryland by the way at the time as being a pain over prescriber as a way to reduce the opioid crisis right in 2018 because it was declared an opioid uh, public health emergency in 2017 so she had a morphine drip for goodness sakes a pack and we were unable because of this legislation to find anybody willing to give her a couple of days prescription to carry her over until we could get to an appointment to refill her prescription. So she went into withdrawals and to the best of my knowledge, she went and bought something off the street and was gone. Which is not uncommon, right? Oh, not at all. Not at all today. I mean, there are pressed pills. There are of... Uh, you know, Fenton, we just, uh, this morning, I had somebody on the Never Use Loan Hotline text us and say, I'm using your service because my you saved my friend's life who used cocaine, but it had fentanyl in it, and they overdosed, and they're still with us, right? It was yeah. the intent, yeah. Not everybody that calls Never Use Alone has, you know, a substance use disorder. Some people are recreational, right? They only call on the weekends with their party drugs or a first time 
user. We have everybody calls us from we minors, children, okay, teen, teen, teenagers to I think the oldest person that has shared with us is when they were over 70 and realize we're confidential, we're anonymous. You don't even have to give us a real name, give us a real phone number in a real location. And and how extreme is that? Well, being a Wisconsin girl, right, growing up in the North Woods, we actually found somebody at a national park in Oregon utilizing gps coordinates and guide they of course have not of course but they had they experienced an overdose and we notified park rangers who got to them and were able to save their life we okay. have received thirty-one thousand calls since 2019 and we have detected 110 overdoses all of those calls zero loss of life well, let's say, all right, let's go with that. Let, let, so okay. you found it, never use alone, but how does it, so how does it work? Okay. So I'm a co-founder. There were 12 of us. Mm -hmm. We call our founder, a man named Mike Brown. He put up a Facebook post of all things and said, why isn't this a thing? And in 24 hours, we had a phone number, staff, a training guide, a call script, and we were going. So how does it work? Well, Never Use Alone hotline is 800-484-3731. People who use drugs call us before they use, and our operators who all have lived experience and the majority also have medical backgrounds will walk you through a substance use safety plan, unlock your door, put away all of your extra supplies, give us your location, lock up your animals, right? We don't want the cat or dog interfering in care if we have to call EMS or escaping while if, if somebody has to come in to, you know, provide you with life-saving medical intervention. And so we walk through that and then the people use their, their drugs we listen for signs of an acute opioid-induced res acute respiratory depression, apnea, hypoxia, anyway. And then 99.5% oh, of our people never experience an overdose. Hmm. For those that do, we call local EMS and we stay on the line with you and Sometimes EMS remains on the line with us until EMS responds. Like when somebody knocks at the door and we hear that they are with now their patient, right? Our caller, their patient. Because North America has the same 800 service. So we mm -hmm. provide services in Canada. So everybody's going up hunting, fishing. We got you covered. There's also the National Overdose Response Service of Canada. And then we also partner with programs called Brave. Brave is a Canadian co-op and Brave is an application. And we work very closely with them. Uh, there you utilize an application, but you end up with an operator. So you but, log into the app. So you've had 31,000 people who you've convinced or are convinced and trust you that you're not law enforcement or a way to bust <gasps> them, right? Right. Great questions. So we are a nonprofit organization staffed by people who use drugs for people who use drugs to keep people who use drugs alive, safe, and without any judgment, without stigma. We are a love-based organization. If you give us a call, you're going to say, hey, love, how are you doing today? Oh. <laughs> this is Carmen. What can I do for you? You know, who I have pleasure speaking with. And we will, we, again, 100% anonymous and confidential. You don't have to tell us anything or you can tell us anything, you know, and it stays with us. We have never, ever called the police, had a call from the police. I mean, we are <laughs> harm reductionists. We are here to keep you alive. We're not about the police. We're about your life. I heard give one of you a chance to be there tomorrow. Well, I heard one of your volunteers tell a story about her daughter who she was chasing around town 
and and just she had this contentious relationship with her and so they're in a parking lot somewhere fighting like crazy <laughs> and the daughter said what do you want and i think the quote one of your volunteers used was i just want you to live yes that's the objective right yes so when when the idea of never use alone was presented it wasn't even a moment's hesitate. I'm all, I'm all in. Yes, yes, yes. Please give me an opportunity to save someone else's child, someone else's parent, someone else's partner, and to prevent them from getting the call. I know Sam didn't intend to die that mm -hmm. day, or she wouldn't have asked me to come pick her up. Right. That was not her intent. Her intent was to reduce her risk of going into full well, it's something called precipitated withdrawals when you, you, you're you using heavy doses. Now realize this is two years after her vehicle accident, mm -hmm. right? Two years and she's still on heavy doses of opiates. So what everyone needs to know is we are your partner. If, if you are a law enforcement, uh, we work with, I mean, I would tell anybody in parole, probation, provide people, your clients that have substance charges to give them our phone number. We can keep them alive. If you have somebody in recovery or who has just left a recovery program, give them our phone number. Call us. Call well, us. And if you need testimonies, we can share it. And I, I heard that your calling cards are now being distributed in some EMS safe use kits as well, right? That's easy Absolutely. enough to drop that in. Absolutely. So in Wisconsin, the Wisconsin Department of Health, the, the Veterans Administration, believe it or not, the United States Veterans Administration was the first federal agency to endorse Never Use Alone. That makes a lot of um, sense. Because veteran substance use associated with PTSD, right? And we know that Wisconsin is a veteran rich environment. I am actually a Navy veteran. Kenosha County, Racine, Milwaukee, Madison, Dane, props to Oneida County. I grew up in Oneida County. Let's see, Door, the Bad River branch of the Superior Chippewa. Yep. Uh, right. The Great Lakes Inter Tribal Council endorses Never Use Alone. You can go up to all their websites. Just Google Never Use Alone and your local city, state, county, or tribal nation and you will find us well because you know going back to sam from it as a parent or even as a loved one you're never sure as much as we know our kids you're never sure what's going on and you like a lot of parents i read found out at sam's funeral that she was using earlier than you thought right yep yep uh, and no matter how well you know your kids you don't know what's what's really going on right right so the University of Wisconsin Madison, Stevens Point, and I think Wisconsin Rapids all also endorse Never Use Alone. So one of the biggest things is you have a child, you can you can monitor your child when they're maybe in K through 12, right? But when your child goes off to college, mm -hmm. I can tell you that the students are very keenly aware that their generation is dying. Almost no one, you know, can ha hasn't had a connection, either an incredibly close loved one to, or some, you know, third party connection to someone who, who's been lost to an overdose. So, for the for the college age students or parents with college age students, why is never used alone so important? They're up late. They're studying. Hey, here's a little something to keep you going, right? We're not talking about heroin. We're not talking about fentanyl. We're saying, here's a Xanax. And it's not. Right. And it becomes a one and done. So yeah. just call us. Yeah. You know, 15, 20 minutes, we're good to go. What do you say to people, Carmen? And I'm sure you've heard this occasionally. What do you say to people who use the word enabling? Oh, yeah. We're enablers. <laughs> <laughs> we That's a great answer. <laughs> we enable love. First and foremost, we enable your child, your loved one to greet you tomorrow. We enable the opportunity for somebody to find recovery, sobriety, if they want it. 
we also enable you to not get the call. I, I can't. I should have saved that for the last question. That's <laughs> such a that is such a great answer. It's unbelievable. Well, I, I also read. If I do, am I getting this right? You have a son who's also recovering. Yes, he's eight years. By the way, yeah, can't be prouder of this young man. You know that goes to the whole thing. Is if you're gonna take responsibility for one, you got to take the credit for the other, and you you're not gonna take credit for his recovery. Well, there is such heartbreak, turmoil, and chaos when you realize that your child has an addiction mm -hmm. because you can't control it. What you have to figure out is so boundaries. You know, we, I was. I had a top secret security clearance working for the federal government. We don't have drugs in our house. We don't have drugs, you know. I'm like everybody else. I mean, I grew up in Wisconsin. I'm conservative. I'm, you know, I don't even know how to throw up what else to put in there. I, I'm Wisconsin native, native, you know, go Packers and that's it. Cheese head for life. But when it comes to a substance use, you have no control. Right. You have to get educated really fast and figuring out how to keep your child alive to get them off the drugs, to get them the medical help that they need to transition to a life of sobriety or a recovery. And we acknowledge every small change and getting away from chaotic use. In other words, right now we know from the CDC that 63% of the people who die of a drug overdose were alone. That's why we say never use alone. The other people oftentimes weren't alone. They had a bystander present, but sometimes were abandoned. Mm -hmm. There's lots of abandonment stories. Don't want to get in trouble. No, right. Police, legal issues, right? Possession of paraphernalia or even just being in proximity to somebody that overdosed, people get scared. And they run and we say don't run call you know you can call us people call us sometimes after they've used and they've got they get scared because all of a sudden they're like oh my god what if and we can take away the fear the anxiety because you're not alone you're you're supported and it should something horribly life-threatening happen we're there and uh, clearly, you know, listeners, you know, we'll put links to this in the 800 number in our podcast. But how does one Carmen become a volunteer? Oh, just contact neveruselone.com slash volunteer. <laughs> how many volunteers do you have nationwide? So that's an interesting question. OK, the majority of our volunteers are actually on the call centers, right? So we're looking at about 45, 50. It's hard to keep up with the call volume. We just had 2,300 calls last month. And, and we didn't have 2,300 calls in the, the second year. By the way, we're in our fifth year, so we're really excited, right? Because this is, we're making a difference, we're making an impact. And we're now endorsed by the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention as an evidence-based overdose prevention intervention, which is, really exciting to finally get that recognition that we're saving lives. So volunteers, we have outreach and advocates across the nation. We've received a call from every single state in the U.S., the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Micronesia, which is U.S. territory, by the way. And we've also received a call from every single province in Canada Australia, UK, Scotland, Ireland. Wow. I mean, all over the world. It seems like a for you. seems like a great way for recovery people to give back. My mom, who was yes. recovering, instead of going to meetings sometimes, she worked the hotline locally and people it very much the same way, but very, very local. You know, people yes. calling up and what can I do? I'm I'm having trouble. So this would be a great thing for a recovering person to do. Oh, absolutely. So we consider our operators to be peer support operators, people with lived experience. 
the medical experience helps a whole lot because people have issues with wound care. I just took a, my medication, benzos, and, uh, and now I'm getting ready to use this substance, whatever it is. And, you know, and we might advise them it's wiser to wait or to just do a small amount. So even though we might get one phone call from somebody, they may use three or four times on that call, testing a little bit and then a little more. So what people are doing is they're not just jumping right in, right? And having that immediate fatal overdose or overdose, which could be a fatality. What they're doing is they're using smaller amounts, testing their products. By the way, naloxone, you can give naloxone to every single person in the world. You cannot mm -hmm. self-administer naloxone if you've overdosed. Right. So that's what we do. When you asked about enabling, we enable naloxone to get to somebody that mm. experienced an unintentional accidental substance use overdose. That's great. I'll, I'll give you what I intended to be your send off question, even though you did it earlier. Um, oh. and, and I'll come back to you. So how is doing this and helping others, how is this helping you? Oh my gosh. It, it has taken my grief that was irrevocable and unconsolable and turned it into love, into healing, into action that, that I know we are making a difference in people's lives. People come back to us, you know, we just, we just had um, an article on a national public radio uh, this American Life did an episode of the call following an overdose on our line that happened, and and what happens is uh, during that our our education director Jessica Blanchard said, you know people stop calling and we wonder what happened, right? And people have been responding to us saying, hey, why don't you know I've been, I'm three years sober, right? I've got a family, I've got a, this great job, I've been to college, and you see life happening. You see people thriving. I see where Sam could have gone had she had this service. And I see where your child or your loved one can go, what their potential is realized. So what it does for me is I, I feel blessed to do this work. Wow. Well, and thank you for doing it. And thank you for doing this you know Thank like you. i yeah like i said before you already know listeners that links to carmen's work never use alone is attached to the podcast if you can't volunteer but you want to learn more about it please click on if you want to donate um that's always beneficial <laughs> right always oh my <laughs> gosh yes we are growing so outreach advocates you want to do a presentation? Do you want a presentation? Come and talk to us. We are ready. We work with, by the way, we do work with the University of Wisconsin-Madison. They are our research partner. Mm. We've been published in uh, 70 peer-reviewed journal articles. And if you Google Never Use Loan, you're going to come up with something like 100,000 hits. Yeah, right. I, read, I didn't read all of them, but yeah. We're out there. there. Yeah, you are. Well, Carmen, thanks a ton for being with us today. And, and listeners, please tell your friends and listen in next time. You never know what you're going to hear. Uh, and until next time, stay safe and please be there for somebody.